Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to automate VXN routing uh, using VXN BGP EVPN on Nexus 9K and to automate we're going to use Yang with RustConf as a transport. So here in this demo I have two VTAPs with already two L2 VNIs configured and so the goal is going to be to route between those two L2 VNIs. So to do that we create a SVI for the internal VLANs and L3 VNI uh, that's going to be used for the only purpose of routing between um, between VNIs. And so those are the two VTAPs. So we can confirm we have um, the two L2 VNI segments exist already. So we're going to go to Postman and start creating the configuration for the VXN routing. We're going to have a new tenant, create tenant 20, 20,000. So what we need to do first is to create the VRF. So we do a typical post. We go to the top system. Um, what matters here is this domain items, domain list. This is essentially really creating the new VRF, giving it a name. Um, and then under the AF, AF means address family. So we create uh, address family IP for unicast. And um, for the L2 VPN, EVPN, essentially this is enabling uh, the raw targets configuration. So um, we can confirm here before we run it. Uh, there is no there is no tenant that exists already, so we're gonna go ahead and send the commands. And now we see the tenant twenty thousand has been created with the configuration that we wanted, and of course we associate it with the, the L three VNI. So uh, this this is the L three VNI uh, part, right? The second one is we need to create this internal VLAN. So, as, as before, we go to the BD items object and we create a new BD list with that VLAN 666 and we associate it to the L3 VNI. So we send and now we see under the VLAN configuration, it's, it's been created. We also need to create an internal SVI for this VRF. So here we go to the interface items object and there is a sub object called SVI items, and under this SVI we create a new object with this VLAN. Um, and so let's go ahead and send it. And so it's been created. And so now we need to assign it to the VRF, right? So we go to the VRF and we say, hey, this SVI is is part of it, right? So we go to the same domain items domain list. So we do that, and so um, also we've enabled IP forward um, that was here, but um, now we see this interface uh, is the VRF member um, here, right? Which uh, just took a few seconds to be uh, to appear, um, and now we need to add L three. Uh, VNI to the NV interface. So we do just the same as we did for VXN bridging. We go there, we have the VNI items uh, and we create a new a new item here. And so NV interface is, is here. So we do associate VRF because this is L3 VNI. Right? And we need to of course add it to BGP EVPN. So in order to do that we go to the BGP object and we go to the list of items and this represents the VRF. So we say hey, this VRF now is part of the BGP, the, the router BGP instance that we already have. So we can see what we have today is the two L2 VNIs part of it, the VRF is part of it. So um, what was what was missing is here from the router BGP um, under specifically the router BGP 65000. Uh, the VRF now is part of it with the address family IP for unicast and we advertise L2 VPN VPN. So this is here. So that we need to do it only once. And now for each L2 VNI that we want to route, we need to create uh, an SVI, right? So this is the same as we've we've done earlier. So we create an SVI, we assign 
um, the VRF and IP to that SVI. So again, this is exactly the same, except of course this time we give um, an IP address for the default gateway. And we enable the distributed default gateway on the SVI, right? So we specify under the SVI, the mode is anycast gateway, right? So we do that. And so now VLAN 200 has been created. And previously, since this is static, we didn't do it using Yang, but we have the, the anycast gateway MAC address, which is unique per VTAP. And so we do that, and we're going to do the same for the second L2 VNI. So we do exactly the same command since we want to route between the two VNIs. Okay, and now we just have to repeat the same process for the second VTAP. So in Postman, you can just run a collection very easily and you do everything at once. So we're going to do everything at once, but this time we're going to pick the second VTAP. We're going to do start test, and boom, everything got created. All right, and again, we can do some validation. BGP is here, everything is here. Okay, so now let's do a test with XR. Right, we're going to use uh, XR port 202, and we're going to send some traffic to 2013. So essentially, really, that's going to route between the L2 VNIs. So we are going to enable those two traffic items. And if we verify the flow, uh, first of all, source MAC is one as before. Destination MAC is indeed the dead B feed, which was what, what we had configured on the switch. Right? And we go from 202 to 2013. Right? We're gonna go ahead. This is the reverse. So we are starting the traffic. It will take a few seconds. So this is good. So now traffic is flowing between the two ports, right? So this is working. And if we clear the counters, we should be able to see with uh, the command show NV VNI. And if we pick the L3 VNI, we see how the traffic is flowing. 